in a wildfire, if my home burns, it makes that fire stronger within the built environment and allows for that conflagration to unfold. So, you know, over the last 30 years, we've seen a, a lot play out. Um, our forests are much denser uh, and we've had a lot of tree mortality, particularly here in California with droughts that we've experienced. So a lot of dead materials. So we have forests that are unhealthy um, and that's typically where the, the fires start. Um, and then when they burn under drought conditions where the, the vegetation is very dry and receptive for that fire that's burning in the wildland area to the rapid growth of that fire and, and increase the intensity of it. And then you add a strong wind to that fire um, you're really setting the stage for that fire to be pushed very quickly into a, a community. Um, we have homes that were built um, decades ago, you know, before the, the building codes for building and wildfire prone areas came into existence. And even now with good, some good building codes in place in, in California, we have the California Building Code Chapter 7A, which is arguably the most stringent uh, code for building and wildfire prone areas. It doesn't encompass uh, or require building to that standard in all the areas that would be impacted by fires. Because once we see the wildfire transition into a built environment, it's not really your traditional wildfire any longer. It's an urban fire burning urban fuels. And in that context, those are fuels that anything that can burn, including the structures and, and other buildings that are on the property, wood fences, uh, ornamental vegetation, vehicles, you know, just some of the, the things that can help um, spread the fire within the community and between structure to structure. So um, we've seen, though, that in areas that uh, have been built to the California Building Code Chapter 7A, that those uh, structures have a much higher likelihood of survival.